Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Alyssa Cox about the importance of building and maintaining a network internally in your organization to help you meet your goals. Alyssa Cox, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much, John. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Chicago. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be focusing the conversation around the importance of building and maintaining a network internally in your organization to help you meet your goals. Now, we talk about networking a lot. And of course, professional networking uh, broadly outside of your current organization, that's also very, very important. So we just because we're focusing on internal networking, we don't want to suggest that the the other forms of networking aren't important. Of course, they are. But today we're going to be focusing specifically on internal networking throughout your organization so you can leverage those relationships uh, and influence uh, as you're both developing your own career, but also just working to collaborate more effectively and and have good outcomes for your team. As we get started, I wanted to share Alyssa's bio with everybody. Alyssa Cox is the founder of Blue Swift Consulting and a respected organizational effectiveness strategist with 14 years of experience helping organizations unlock the latent potential in their workforces by taking advantage of the unrealized opportunities built into their everyday practices. I really appreciate you joining me. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background, personal context before we dive on in further? Part of, I've spent part of my career with a major consultancy. And when I was with that consultancy, we talked about networking all the time. And it was almost exclusively internal networking. And I've never, anywhere else that I've worked or anywhere else that I've been, I've never seen that kind of internal networking focus, but it was so powerful. And that's, So you'll hear me in the next few minutes get really jazzed about this subject. And it's because I do think it's a really powerful tool for for effectiveness and all the things that you want out of your external network, you will bolster with your internal network. So give it a chance and make sure you're not missing out on that really critical portion of the power of your network. I love it. And I'm glad you're so excited about it because most people I talk to dread networking. The idea of networking is something that they cringe you know, about and they kind of often will shrink from. So we do need the evangelists you know, of networking who are excited about it, who can really help uh, to convey the importance of it. And I also, we're going to get more into this, of course, but again, as we're contrasting the external versus the internal networking, I've known people that have been really, really good external networkers, really broad national global networks, great thought think, uh, uh, thought leaders and influencers and uh, doing so many really great things. But within their organization, they were very ineffective because they didn't have the, they, they put all the energy into their external network. They didn't have much of any internal network. And in fact, really all they had was, was uh, bad relationships and, and reputation within their internal organization, which impeded their ability to succeed. Uh, so of course the external is important, but if we're going to, to make progress in our careers and develop our potential and the potential of our teams, we have to, we have to lead not just down, but across and up. And we, and we can only do that as we network, right? 
Absolutely. And for people who feel like networking is like kind of awful, right? <laughs> there is there is a kind of networking. I think this is a lot of people's perception of networking. I'm going to go to a networking event. I'm going to collect a bunch of cards. My success in that event is do I collect the most cards for the people who make the most amount of money, right? And that's it. That, that's that's networking. And it's all kind of fake. I have no idea why these people are talking to me or why they would ever want to talk to me again. And so it's a bunch of like missed connections, right? Effective networks, first of all, are a give and take, right? You're going to, you're going to ask for things of your network. You're also going to give and you get things from your network when your goals are aligned. And so whenever you're asking for something from your network, think about also why they want to give it to you. And so in a classic sort of getting a new job example, if you're asking somebody for an opportunity to apply to a role in their department, why would they sort of, why would they help boost your resume? Why would they help drive your success as an applicant? Well, they want to be viewed as, as cultivators of talent, as identifiers of talent. They want to bolster that reputation for themselves within the organization. They want to build their internal network across the organization and putting you, putting somebody that they find qualified into a role within their organization helps meet their objectives. And so thinking about the confluence of objectives across your network and how we all sort of help each other, it's not just a take, but it's also a give. This is, I think, a really important part of shifting your mindset about networking and making it just a lot less awkward. Yeah, that reciprocal relationship is is super important, whether we're talking about professional networking or really any relationship, right? Now, I, I do believe like if if we're if it's solely calculated and we have this reciprocal mindset where we're constantly keeping tally, you know, that that doesn't lend that doesn't lead to really strong uh, relationships. But what we're talking about in terms of professional networking isn't necessarily those those strong relationships, but it's it's a it's a network of um, connectivity that can help with the flow of information and opportunity and those sorts of things. And sometimes over time, they can become strong relationships. So I, I do think it's important to kind of parse that out. Uh, I was just at one of these types of networking events uh, a few weeks ago. I, I was a speaker at an event and they had a little mingle beforehand. And so people were networking and, and I was there too, just kind of eating, you know, drinking and, and eating, you know, s- some snacks and, and whatever, talking to people for about an hour before the event. And it, yeah, man, I don't like it. I, you know, it's, I like talking to people, um, but I don't like kind of the fakeness of, of people feigning interest that don't seem to have interest in each other, just trying to get cards or, or add you on LinkedIn or whatever. Um, and I'm not sure really why it matters or how that really helps you. I don't think that does help you very much. Uh, sometimes on the one off, you might get lucky and you, you, you make that connection with someone, uh, who, you know, where your, your values and your needs align and, and you can follow up and have contact and that's fantastic. Um, but the bottom line is those sorts of networking events, those contrived networking events, that's what most people think about when they think about networking. And that's not where the magic usually happens, is it? That's right. It's like trying to find your next best friend at a rave. (laughs) Go there, have a good time, interact with people. It's great. But afterwards, are you expecting to like have them over for board game night? Uh, Probably not, right? There are people for whom the networking event really works, right? This speaks to their personality. It speaks to how they like to engage. They find it very natural to be gregarious and and engaging in this sort of big group, quasi-anonymous way. And they're able to leverage that into sort of a follow-up conversation. And I would like, so for those people, keep doing that. Knock yourself out. If that doesn't work for you, stop doing that. Just like finding a friend or finding a spouse, finding and building your network is a deeply, deeply personal thing. Do what feels natural to you. There's no one way to build an effective network. And so if, if the networking, the group networking event doesn't work for you, Spend some time thinking about what does. When have you found mentors? When have you leveraged advocates and had a really good experience, gotten what you need out of it, um, sort of built that relationship, had a give and a take? What were, how did that happen? 
what were sort of the hallmarks of what you did to make that work? And then go do that some more because that's actually your recipe for building an effective network. And it really can and often does happen more organically. Now, we often have to be purposeful about it. Uh, we, We have to keep our eyes open for opportunities and we have to take advantage of opportunities when they arise. And so if we have our head down and we're just kind of narrowly focused on whatever our work is and we don't take those opportunities to, to meet new people um, and, you know, maybe have, have a meal with different people uh, frequently or go to those mixer events um, uh, or whatever, like, and, and as right now, as we're talking internally within organizations, every organization does this a little bit differently. Maybe you really don't, like happy hour kind of settings. You don't want to go hang out with everyone after work. Uh, you'd rather just go home and spend time with your family. All that's fine. Um, we, But you also just need to keep in mind what are other opportunities then that you can take. And I was um, talking with a, a young woman recently who was young in her career. She, she uh, knew that it was important that she find mentors and build her network and she did something I'd never seen anyone be so darn proactive uh, and take the initiative to do it. But she just made a point of every day she would go to it was a big organization. They had a couple thousand employees, lots of different departments. She she didn't just stay in her department and eat lunch. But every day she would go to a different department and she would just find people who were eating and she would just approach them and say, hey, I'm so and so from this department. Uh, would you mind if I if I just sit with you and eat? And she did that. She ate with different people all the time. And over the course of her first year at that organization, she became the well-connected person that everyone knew, knew everyone else who people would go to. Uh, and she was able to position herself that way simply through eating lunch with different people uh, and and making a point of it, you know? And, and so it doesn't have to be these big, awkward networking events um, it can be more casual things. There, there's all sorts of opportunities as we work with co- cross collaborative teams, as we uh, have professional development opportunities. I mean, there, the the list goes on and on and on of how you can make those connections with people around your organization. Uh, just look for those opportunities and then do what fits with you and your personality um, so that you can be genuine and authentic. Uh, and when you're genuine and authentic uh, and a little bit vulnerable, uh, then it gives other people the permission to be the same. And that's where you can have much uh, better connections, right? A hundred percent. And I would also say, if you're struggling with like your why, right? What is your objective? What are you trying to accomplish? You know, If you're going outside your organization, you're looking for another job, that's your objective, right? But inside your organization, every year you set up goals, you're working on something. And the work that you do on that thing can be greatly amplified by aggregating others' efforts, whether it's their hands on the keyboard or their insights. And so I like to advise people, right? If you're thinking about like, what do I need to do to build my network? My first question is, what are you trying to accomplish? If you have an objective in mind, then I like to think about your network at, and people in your network as falling into like three buckets, right? You've got mentors who help you think differently and think outside the box. They give you new ideas, but they're, 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 they're there to help you think. You've got advocates. These are people who are there to open doors for you to new opportunities, to resources and headcount, to sort of new sort of new folks across the organization. But you're asking them for something. And then there are followers. And these are the people who are willing to put their hands on the keyboard with you, are willing to sort of are willing to lift, do the heavy lifting with you. And if we think about your network in in those terms and people falling into sort of those three buckets vis-a-vis a specific objective, if your network is 500 people, the network that you really want to focus on right now, given your specific objectives, probably like five to six people. And as you think about it, do you have the right five to six people to fill those three roles? And if you find that you're light, well, this is where you now need to go and bolster your network. And we're talking about, it can be outside your organization, but there are a ton of, you have a captive audience inside your organization. Don't walk away 
from those 20 or 200 or 2,000 or 20,000 people just because they already work where you work. Like you said, they're a captive audience, but there's at least some level of value alignment and congruence between goals and wants and needs and objectives, right? And so sometimes when you're trying to build your external network, it can be a little challenging to just find people with the right fit. Uh, I, I think it's easier. It's easier within your own organization where there's a common language, there's common culture, um, some sort of sort of shared history, institutional memory, et cetera, um, to, to make those connections with people. Um, another thing that I was thinking about was, you know, I, I, I'm a university professor uh, in addition to doing consulting work and things like this podcast. And I've been at my university now for uh, over 13 years. A uh, large university, 40 plus thousand students. I don't even know, probably something in the range of three to 4,000 faculty, staff, administrators, you know, all the support people. And there's a lot of people, right? And I've been here a long time. Uh, I, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of connecting and networking across campus uh, with lots of people in different divisions, different parts of campus, in part due to some different roles I've had, different uh, working groups and committees I've been on, those sorts of things. Um, but I recognize with the efforts I put in, for example, early in my career, pre-tenure, and then moving past tenure, moving into, you know, into my future, you know, I put a lot of effort into building that internal network because I saw that as being really important and vital to me to not only having success in my own career, but building in a, a successful academic program and et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. But what I need to remind myself of continually is just because I did a lot of work in this space 10 years ago, five years ago, doesn't mean it maintains itself today, right? There's constantly people changing. And even at a university where it's pretty stable and there's less inflow outflow of people, uh, as you might have at a, a, a you know, for-profit uh, corporate kind of organization and setting, we still have turnover and we still have people coming and going and there's constant inflow and outflow of people, people change roles. Uh, and so it's something you have to constantly be paying attention to. And you, you can't feel like just because you are really plugged in and you really have great connections and you have great relationships with people two years ago, that doesn't necessarily mean much of anything today, unless you're staying connected you're, you're sustaining those relationships and investing in those relationships, and you're working to make new meaningful connections in the areas that are needed, right? Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. That's right. And I see a lot of people spend a lot of time networking up and spend less time networking at the entry level. So networking down in the organization. And what that means is when you have an open role or you need something, the people who are closest to data tend to be at the entry level. The people who are going to fill your open roles, they are below you in the organization. So if you want to just draw a name out of a hat, knock yourself out. Don't make any effort to meet any of those people. But if you want access to some of the best people to fill your open roles, if you want fast access to cross-functional data and cross-functional insights, make a deliberate effort. And yes, this is a pool that changes Every year, every year, new people join your organization. Every year, this is where a lot of turnover happens. People quit. It is a revolving door. But these people, while they are sitting in your organization, can be of huge help to you. And you neglect them at your peril. So take the time, not just to meet people above you, but also to develop, and this is developing followership, to meet people at the entry level in your organization, to meet people below you in the hierarchy and not just one level, but all the way down because these are the people who do the heavy lifting in the organization. 
And if you want them to lift toward your objectives, they're looking to know you. Yeah. So, so uh, vertical and horizontal networking within your organization up and down and across uh, is really, really important. So we can't forget that. Oftentimes we think, well, connecting with those people above us, that's our best opportunity to advance. Um, and, you know, managing up and networking up, that is important. But to your point, who, who you, you have the formal power, the formal roles, leadership roles, responsibilities, but who, who are the gatekeepers? Who are the people who have the informal power and control and influence and the opportunity to uh, impact things? And, and in some cases, it might be because they're on the front lines with the access to the key data that's really necessary that you need to tap into. Maybe they're just the gatekeeper to the person who's making the decision, or maybe they're a bit of a funnel, you know, they're, they're a funnel point where, where information flows through. Uh, and so connecting with various people at different areas, different levels of the hierarchy within the organization are going to be very, very important. Connecting with people with not only formal power, but informal power and influence uh, is going to be really important. And I think about, you know, the, if, if I spend all my time uh, networking up, uh, eventually those people do switch out also they they move on to other opportunities and once they're gone like they become part of my external network right and that can still uh, be powerful but once they're gone no longer are they going to assist me internally within the organization but the people that are are on on my level or people who are uh entry level or or lower than me in the hierarchy they're still there and so it gives me an opportunity to leverage the human capital in my organization as I seek to move up into new roles of responsibility uh, and leadership, et cetera. So, yeah, again, we, we don't want to neglect the the uh, the networking up. It's important. But I think oftentimes people spend way too much time and energy trying to do that and recognizing if pretty much everyone's trying to network up to those same limited number of people you just think about like the the likelihood of you being able to have that that full connection point where they're going to pay attention to you where it's going to benefit in the future you know what what makes you stand out in relation to you know the dozens or hundreds or thousands of other people who also want to know that person and leverage that relationship for their own career development you know let's let's make sure we're doing vertical vertical and horizontal uh, networking. Let's make sure that we're looking at not just the formal titles of people that we're trying to network with, but the the informal influencers and people who are in strategic positions with access to key information. All of that's going to be really important to us. And oftentimes you don't, particularly for those informal influencers, when you're new to an organization or new to a department, new to a role, you don't know who those people are. You only learn through context. You only learn through having built or not built an effective relationship with those people and then finding later that it was super helpful or wasn't helpful. And this is some place, something you need to remediate. And so making sure that you're reaching out and, and again, up how is vertically up horizontally and vertically down really critical as you're thinking about networking within your organization for where you are today. Yeah. And in our final few minutes, maybe a few key pointers or tips for anyone listening today, if they want to get started on doing this internal focus networking, uh, what what are some of the best things you've seen for people to just get going with that um, so they can start to, to move the needle a little bit? I come back over and over again to what is it you're trying to do? What is your objective? If you can't articulate your objective, nobody else knows why you're talking to them either. So Identify what your objective is and then figure out who in your, like what gaps you have in your network to meet that objective and then practice asking for something. I hear a lot of folks say like, well, I want a mentor, but I don't know how to go get one. But once you've identified somebody that you think would be a good mentor, I mean, my question is, what is it you're looking to learn from that person? And when you go and ask them, if somebody emails me and says, oh, could you be my mentor? I'm like, I don't even know what you're looking for. I don't know what that means. It sounds to me like you just want me to get you a promotion. If somebody emails me and says, hey, I am working on this thing. I've observed or seen that you've got this context here. I think you have some interesting insights in this space. We'd love to pick your brain on that. 
Now we're having a conversation. Come to my office. Let's talk. This is now the foundation for building a broader relationship. So what is your objective? What is your ask? And be ready to make that ask when you ask for people's time. Be ready to make that ask when you finally get in front of people and are having a conversation. And if it feels uncomfortable making an ask, practice making an ask in the mirror. Because the more you practice, the more fluently you'll be able to express what it is that you're looking for and what it is that you need. And people who want to help you, they want you to tell them what it is you need. So define your objective and use your objective to identify where you have gaps in your network and to use that as an outreach, excuse me, as an outreach tool to build those relationships that you need to bolster your network and meet that objective. Perfect. Alyssa, this has just been a really great conversation. You've helped me think about things in an, in a new way. And hopefully this has been equally as helpful to my audience. Before we wrap things up for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Sure. So you can reach me. I'm active on LinkedIn. Um, I also run a, a small consultancy called Blue Swift Consulting. You can find us at www.bluswiftconsulting.com. And I talk to people about networking. I talk to individuals. I talk to teams. I talk to big groups. And so if you want to talk about networking, particularly how to amplify your impact inside your organization and how to help your team do that, shoot me a note on LinkedIn. So shoot me a note through the website. Would love to just sort of talk to you first and have a get a good sense of the lay of the land. Uh, your network, you put a lot of effort into so much that you do. You put a lot of effort into your schoolwork. You put a lot of effort into your work work. You put a lot of effort into your the work that you do with your family. You know how to put work in. You know how to put work into building your network. Make sure you're setting yourself up to have your network do work for you, right? And again, that is being crystal clear on your objective and understanding how to make an ask. Wonderful. Thank you, Alyssa. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Alyssa can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.